And then lastly, and of course, you know, I put this here because I know where this is going to go. Uh, and it would have been, you know, perfect in a, in a new segue section. But I started the new LP on uh, the channel as of last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. We took a crack open and you should be seeing it soon in anime form. But I'll, uh, I'll, let, I'll let the... The anime, lo the anime loyal know that Doom Eternal has been cracked open. So, yo, I heard, I heard that game's good. Yep. And I also heard that that game is in the news this week. And <laughs> in particular, I am playing Doom Eternal the same way I played Doom 2016 on my PlayStation 4. Which is not in the news this week. No. <laughs> I am comfortably enjoying, uh, well, with some exceptions, I, I am comfortably enjoying my copy of Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal on my PlayStation 4. Because boy, oh boy, uh, does PC not have a reason to be happy with this game. Before that, even... Before the news yeah, well, this so we'll week, talk, we'll talk about that. Before the news this week, I have to say that um, I've heard all of you guys talking for years about Bethesda, and it's kind of been one of those things in my brain that's like, okay, giant company that does shit things. Uh, yep. Uh, that's the, but you have no personal overlap. No attached. No, so there, I have no threads. Doesn't like no just, threads mm -hmm. whatsoever. Whatsoever. None. You know. I just know that. Hey, that's one of those ones that did some things that sucked, and were shitty, and people are not happy with that. So I'm like, okay, well, you know. And then you you crack open Doom Eternal, and you want to talk about every step of this game being like. I mean, thank the best game. I mean, thank God that the game itself is still made by like the 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 super good people that made 2016 and like still scored by Mick, you know, at least. Yeah. But for now, for now. But there's so much publisher meddling that feels like we are let's get our hands all over this fucking thing. And Dude, when you load the game up, I don't know if it's like that on PS4, but like you have to sign up for a Bethesda. Step thing. one, right? And that was my immediate moment of frustration, and and like, and and eh, I was like, ugh, eh. I, I got really annoyed at that, right? And um, some people were like, it's not a big deal. Who cares? Why? What are you complaining about? And I'm like, this screen does not let you press circle to cancel it. You cannot yep. back out. You cannot ignore it. You cannot even choose. Ah, turn off all my online features, right? It is a forced sign up. And I'm like, I worked in this world. I know what this screen is. I've worked on games crazy. that have this screen, right? This is a very clear, we need people and we want people to push to sign up for the thing. Because when you sign up, obviously we can get you more ads and get you shit in your inbox. And, and that's, get you on a mailing list. And all that yeah, crap. yeah, obviously we know how that works, right? But the thought process where you decide, the moment you decide that you will remove the ability for the player to cancel that or to say no to it entirely is a forced negative interaction that you are anticipating the player will have as their first moments with the video game. So uh, if you got the game day one and loaded up at any point on day one, me and uh, I had this experience. Everybody else I knew had this experience. And uh, Jim had this experience when he put it up in his video. So I'm pretty sure it was universal. What would happen is, is that you would uh, do that sign up process, right? And uh, it, you'd be like, fuck, right? And then uh, you would press start and the game would then immediately go, the Bethesda net service has crashed. That's hilarious putting you into offline mode that's or whatever fucking, the fuck. That's fucking hilarious, dude. It, it was literally button press one Each, and button yeah. press two. Yep. Fuck you, fuck you. The double. The double fuck. They could have just opted that uh, they're giving you a choice. But the calculated decision in the design to not give you a choice anticipates your frustration will not be as high as 
your desire to just get this shit out of the way and start the game. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, again, the 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 there were the, the the those that were like confused by why that bothered me, you know. And I'm like, I I feel this is a poor way to start your experience off, and this is publisher decided. This is not developer decided. Um, it's it's really clear what's in there that's publisher and what's what's not publisher. Yeah, I've talked about in the past how. Um, like monetization experts and gas experts will come in and find ways to create added value where a design doesn't have any, right? Their job is, is, is in many cases to like create a revenue stream where their game didn't have a revenue stream. And, you know, uh, part of this is also we've discussed in the past when they factor in that the pricing on microtransactions might be immensely upsetting to you at first, but uh, if they shoot for the moon, then, or you shoot for the sun or whatever, then hey, if they back it off afterwards and land among the stars, so to speak, then it's like, well, that price is no longer insane. It's now just normal high, which- So you gotta beat it next time. So, you know, you know so you anticipate, calculate, and implement your plan that includes your anger, frustration, displeasure, possible blowback, negativity, all of that is factored into the decision-making process, right? It's super gross. It's a really shitty way to go about things because, you know, you're essentially saying like, well, this is, this is the bottom line and this is how much the person enjoys the experience that they're purchasing or the game they're purchasing. And we want to underline that we want to cut that off and scrape it to a point where we can min max it you know so um yeah that's awful that shit's garbage and every time i see a decision based on that thought process i i'm bothered by it so that's why i was bothered in this case. little little thing in the pit of your stomach goes uh oh yeah so now i understand this is the bethesda thing this is their way with it and again like i said i've worked on games where we've had these things and I remember seeing the iterations of the screen of sign up now and some versions of the screen were more aggressive than others. I've seen this over the course of builds. You know who has the best one? Capcom. Capcom, you load it up and it says, do you want to join RE.net? And the options are yes, no, and never ask me about this shit again. <laughs> That's always great. That's always great. Uh, I like, I've gotten used you hit to why and it dies. So I've gotten used to, and it's 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 not as clean as I, I like a good UI. I've often talked about like some of you know my my favorites and you know how much like Metroid Prime Trilogy bothers me that they got rid of all the cool design statement they had for their mm -hmm. front their front end. Um, I've gotten used to a like tab sort of system where like killer instinct for example has the little network tabs on the right and you can like map yeah right, right or right. smash for example or has those little tabs on the right and you can go there for all these little community online things and you can just you know browse through this information if you want it or not but it's over here in its own section you know so uh i did not make a bethesda account i did not sign up for it i i absolutely uh turned my internet off went back in offline and then it was like searching for your online privileges uh it, it appears that you're not online okay we'll let you in for now i guess <laughs> begrudgingly we will let you play this game but be warned you will not receive bonus xp for your your legendary skins and you will not be able to participate in this multiplayer function that no one cares about anyway. Be warned. <laughs> I'm like, okay, can we start the game? You know. Um, it was, uh, yeah. And then after that, you know, it's like, hey, press triangle to go online if you want. It's like, yeah, I'm good. So each time, each time, I, and I've, I've booted up again since, and it's gone through a little bit of an update process where it, it's going to check you every time. And every time I'm like, all right, well, I guess we're going to have to play this game disconnected from the internet because fuck that i don't i don't give a shit and i'm not gonna now be now you have a slight you know you have a slight taste of when bethesda started doing all that mod shit like the paid mod stuff people started to freak out not just because it was obviously a bad idea 
But Bethesda's bad ideas are just a cut above. Wait, they were selling other people's mods? Remember that thing where they were going to make it so that we talked about it on the podcast like two years ago for Skyrim where they wanted to like monetize mods but there was like no protection as to whether or not the uploader of the mod was the person who actually made the mod. Oh. And so it was a giant massive shit show. Okay. We talked about, right. about it for like an hour and a half but right. that was like two, three years ago. So that was that was their shit. Yeah. <sighs> That's just stupid, dude. I I, yeah. I really, um, you know, and then you kind of go into it and like there's places where like it's like whatever. Like I, I felt it a little bit when I popped up Doom 2016 and like the entire front menu was just advertising the upcoming stuff. It was just mm -hmm. like that whole network tab thing. Like I was like, did this game used to have a front end? And everyone's like, yeah, it did. That got updated the fuck out of the game, you know, once uh, time passed. And... Um, now looking at it, like it definitely is like, you know, you got your campaign button and you got your, 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 your missions and then you got your, your multiplayer stuff. Um, there's a lot of that, like, you know, extra feature skins, XP missions, check a lot of, I'm feeling a lot of that vibrating, mm -hmm. vibrating off of the front end. And I'm kind of just ignoring it and just going, just let's just get back into the fucking game and shoot the demons, please. You know. So how's the shooting of the demons? Shooting of the demons is great. The shooting of the demons is great. It's fantastic. It's incredible. It just it bums me uh, out that this has to go up front, but that's where it's placed. Once we get into the game, when I was playing it, I couldn't believe. I kept saying the same phrase over and over, and I was like, "This is a fucking video game." Yes, it is. To the point where they've increased the video game in this. They've made the um, the kills even goofy gorier. You want a you want a fucking big fat one up head? Goof gore and one ups are floating in the world, so they've they've completely embraced that side of things even harder than they did in the previous iteration. And I mean, yo, I got my double air dash, I got my double jump, I got my wall climbs. Like we're moving, you know? Yeah, very quickly in, you're like, oh, they're, they they want to do a first person character action game with guns. They also have a clear loop. That they've designed mm -hmm. and uh, made very, um, uh, what's the word? They've they've emphasized apparent. It. Apparent, yes. They've emphasized yeah. it. They, in fact, they refer to it on the difficulty selection screen. When you go to ultra violence or or, or ultra hardcore, whatever the the you know the the final. So ultra violence, then nightmare, then ultra. Ultra nightmare, nightmare right? Yeah. So when you go to the nightmare thing, it literally refers to like if you have lightning fast reflexes and you understand and have mastered the loop you know the combat loop so it's like yeah okay um i was definitely playing and having i'm like oh man gotta remember gotta warm back up i had to slowly rev the engines a little bit um and then the way i got better in, in the first game was to just play between sessions go back and collect mm -hmm. everything and uh you know brush up and, and get better and better so i've done a little bit of that so um i'm, I'm feeling a, a little the the way the map stuff works in Eternal, the map is way better. Um, I was able to get, like, full completions of those maps near every single, like, first trip through because you can just see big, fat question marks, I like, where you actually need to go. Yeah, I just am having a bit of that uh, astral chain problem. And it's this is exactly what I described when you first told me about it, uh, when you took a look at it when it came out. <coughs> I am having exactly the problem I said I would, which is the giant mission size means no clean point to stop and go back and do. The oh, they're things. enormous. Um, uh, I had that problem streaming even. Yeah, because I, I started and I was like, I'm going to do three levels. And then I'm like halfway through the third level and I'm like, oh, yep, exactly. Fuck. Exactly. So. Oh, and, and then your checkpoint is right where it is. Right. So something I was afraid of and. um. At the time I finished off, I, I I asked the universe. I was like, "Hey, so I'm at this checkpoint. If I leave and go back and do other stuff, am I going to lose it?" And uh, people thought, "Yeah." I tested it out, and it turns out, no, you don't lose your current checkpoint when you go back to replay other older missions. So that was okay. But um, mission two, for example, the entire first part of that mission where you are going 
and you see uh and you see the wolf in that whole like castle area yeah that whole part of that is like not its own mission it's part of it it's the beginning of mission two so Mm -hmm. i can't replay that and get better at whatever happens there or any of those things because uh i have you would have to restart the the current one which undoes my upgrades which undoes my my unlocks perks and everything i've gotten so far in the current mission so just play through the whole game in one sitting come on yeah exactly so you know it it, it still does have this this thing which you know and it's a very unique problem to 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 have obviously because it, it applies to you know i suppose like playing this in 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 broadcasted sittings but the fact that the end mission points are far and few in between create issues for my ability to like continue to uh, level up and practice and collect things that I missed uh, in previous missions. And I really wish they'd break yeah, it, they those, broke it up more. It's one of those weird gameplay things where it's like for the average person or the non... How do I put this? The non-broadcaster consumer, mm-hmm. who, who cares? What like it, this is a a, a, a non-issue, mm-hmm. uh, but for us broadcast consumers, it pops up and it's like, hmm, ah, hmm, yeah. Um, my solution to that ended up being to stream two levels only mm-hmm. a night, but to a hundred percent them, mm-hmm. so that I wouldn't have to go back. Mm-hmm. I, I you see. Fortunately, the thing is, is that um, while that that works in that for that works for you there. For me, the revisit also serves as practice, which I really need. Mm-hmm. You know, um, as someone who's not very good at first person shooters, uh, every time I'd re go through the stage and get more collectibles, and sometimes just do it for the fuck of it. It would really help me tighten up. So, for example, like you, uh, what difficulty you play? Well, that's on? it. So I start. I, I I'm playing on normal, um, mm-hmm. and then I started my own practice slot on um, nightmare. Okay. So uh, that's uh, that's high y- to start. Yeah, but I want to <laughs> improve. So I've so I after the first session. I then went into Nightmare on a second slot, and I won't be passing yeah. by my current progress point, but I'll be playing mm-hmm. out in that way so that I can at least get better at the base game, you know? Um, that's my that's my point, because I'm like, if I can't go back and collect things to, like, improve my, my, my weapons, to get the extra add-ons, all that shit I could do mm-hmm. in the original. I, I, I was able to go get all the perks off, off screen and come back and go, yep, I leveled up this gun, it's maxed out. I can't do that now, I would, so now uh, I just have to do the version of that in, in my head, which is leveling up, you know, on my Nightmare run. I would personally recommend actually just, sw- instead of doing that, but just to switch your, your regular playthrough to Ultraviolence. Um... Doom ha- it, so Doom doesn't surface it the way that Halo does. Uh, Halo is the only game I can think of that surfaces it like in your face, where you have your difficulty modes in Halo, which is I think casual, normal, and then uh, heroic, and then legendary. Mm-hmm. And then when you you mouse over heroic, it literally says this is the difficulty we tune the game for. This is mm-hmm. pick this one. Um, for Doom, that's ultraviolence. Mm-hmm. Um, the game really feels like built around ultraviolence, whereas normal tones some things down from UV, and nightmare just just takes the fucking scale to eleven, and everything does way more damage, and enemies are faster and stuff like that. Mm. Um, when I was going through it on on UV, there's a, like. That game has a difficulty curve that I would say is a straight line to the upper right. Mm. Like every level is like 30% harder than the level that precedes it. Well, this is where I say that um, when you watch me first pop it on, I'm playing on normal and I'm still I'm still struggling in some points. Mm-hmm. And... You know, especially as I'm trying to get back into like how to aim properly, how to move, and you know, and like there was there was um, I had two choke point rooms, uh, mm-hmm. one where you 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 come out from you know seeing the king, and then you're in that little circle area, 
and like yeah that room was like a choke point for me where i had to really stop and like move properly and keep it going so where there, there's like a knight chasing you around exactly a couple of them right yeah. um you know and then there's the other ones where it's like okay you got two uh spider brains coming out like and uh you got to really get the hang of like dealing with those enemies quick so they all have weaknesses they all have clear ways to, to fight them and uh yeah just learning that for the first time in the first session like after you know one or two tries at it you're seeing me like sloppy and messing up a whole lot um I, again I've, I've tightened up a little bit more since then and especially playing on on nightmare um you kind of have to because like you take one hit of some of their like criticals attacks and you're dead you know um dude i love that game's difficulty curve when i beat the game and i'm like oh, i'll go back and play the the first couple levels you know for funsies yeah. it's it's a like it's like it's a a, a game for children like well, you, the stuff they throw at you at the end yeah. feels like like a different game well, altogether but here's the other thing to keep in mind right so going back and and playing like the beginning on nightmare the first um um arachno whatever spider brain you, arachnotron. arachnotron you come across you don't have air air slow-mo you don't have dash hell no you don't have any of those things you just have to walk it and play it clean so mm -hmm. um take those abilities do make things much easier too you know huge clutch huge uh anyway so what i what i yeah like i said what i ended up doing in the end is that's it i created that second slot um and as far as the the the, the breaking up of the missions go you know the last thing i guess i'll say on it is oh well until i hit that six hour one or whatever the fuck you guys said is coming um is that the um as you said it's not something that most people are going to feel but it takes nothing away it just adds it's just a benefit mm -hmm. so i i would hope in the future that games do that um because it, it, it again it there's nothing to lose and and there's stuff to gain from you know having having it paced and broken up in, in that way and it's weird that you're playing it at this current time where you get to enjoy it and it is incredible but at the same time, you're seeing the, the stuff happening with the PC version. You had your own personal frustration with the the login thing, but you also know that, like, with the like little bit of drama with Mick Gordon, that he's probably not going to come back mm -hmm. for the next one. Mm -hmm. And like, it has this like, and it's all publisher weight. Mm -hmm. It's all just oh yeah, I can feel it. You know, I can feel it doing an incredible job with this video game and handing it off to someone who's going to take it and bend it and fold it and it's like please i just sold you my print please don't fold it into a paper airplane and stuff it into the bottom of your bag under your lunch that is dropping grease onto it <laughs> you know before you walk out of the artist alley like at least have the decency to walk away from the artist alley table with the print still being kept in a decent condition instead of just crushing it into a ball and shoving it in your back pocket you know, but they don't seem to really give a fuck. And obviously, if they're willing to make you start the game up, force you to sign up for a thing and not even give you a chance to, to, to say no to it, they don't give a fuck about all this other shit either way. Right. And it's not on them, even though they're te you know, even though like the controversies that are coming around and all, like they don't they don't care as long as the game sell the thing. Do. Yeah. Doom. Yeah. We make we make doom. You know, we're we're the company. We're the guys, you know, and it's like, fuck, man, like. This was so simple in its appeal, mm -hmm. and you're stepping in and you're doing that thing. You're doing that thing that happens when, you know, something that is simple and appealing, you know, if that's a, if you want to take a music artist analogy. Simple and clean, really. Gets introduced to Hollywood agents that fucking put their shades on and be like, all right, let's set you up. Let's hook you up with this pe these people, these it. it, it uh, influencers and this uh, Instagrams and, and then it'll get you rolling and then you're going to do a cameo over here you're going to be on this reality show and then you gotta you know and then just all this like fucking garbage just gets bloated into something that is like I have, a, I have an simple analogy and for it Bethesda is the divorce lawyer of an amicable divorce oh, how about that how about that where it's like listen honey we really should go our separate ways and and they're like you know what yeah me too let's let's figure this out 
Okay, I'm gonna get a lawyer. Okay, you get a lawyer. Okay, great. Hey, that bitch is gonna take all your money. You you need to do. You need to sue that bitch and steal the kids. I don't know, man. Do I really want to steal Doom Eternal from the 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 people who already bought it with the DRM? You fuck those people. They're they're just trying to fuck you. It's like. By the way, how much are you getting paid? Oh, you know, the uh, more percentage. you take <laughs> from them, the higher my cut is. Or rather, the higher my my, 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 my percent stays the same, but I get more by uh, pulling more into this, into this, more shit into the situation. Cool. So it is in your interest to make things as messy and as expensive as possible. Yes. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, that is ultimately like, that is the feeling and I, and I, and it sucks cause it's just, it's hard to ignore until you just get into the video game and play it. I would say beat it as fast as you can to minimize before all of that. Bethesda screws up the fucking PS4 and Xbox versions. Oh my God. How are you going to de novo a fucking console? Wooly, they made it so that the Doom 1 and 2 ports needed that Bethesda sign in and if the Bethesda net thing went down it would kick you to the fucking dashboard <sighs> they eventually patched that out because that's fucking stupid but yes that does exist it can happen I want to say that the video game industry has a very short memory but then again the shortest but but then but then again every industry no like every industry has Im oh. really short memories. Which industry has the shorter memory? Music, movies, or video games? Maybe movies. Maybe. I feel like I feel like movies is the right answer it's there. The movie it's probably movies. I'd say, right? I'd say so. Yeah. It's like it's an, it's crazy. Like you can fuck up the last one. And make the next one, and then people are like, "Yeah, I'll go see Batman v Superman, Spider Man, <laughs> Sp Spider Man and Superman, man. Yeah. Those two, yeah, the yeah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go see Justice League, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, and and but movies also have that thing of like accidental successes that they cannot comprehend." And then att yeah. attempting to live up to them in some way, shape, or form. So it it's bad memory on part of everybody involved, I suppose. Um, but, you know, games just like, yeah, because yeah, I, I want to know, like, for all this behavior we hear about, you know, Bethesda and, and, and everything they've done. And EA and... What has the Bethesda historical response been to shit tons of anger? Fuck you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Figures. Eat shit. Figures. Is there a Bobby Kotick that we should know about? Yeah, it's Todd Howard. There you go. God coward. Now, Todd Howard likely doesn't have anything to do with Doom. But fuck him anyway. <laughs> right. He's an asshole. <laughs> God coward. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. So... Um, oh, Pete Hines. Pete Hines. Mm. There you go. Blame. Fuck you, Pete Hines. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thanks, chat. Appreciate it. Um. In any case, hey, man, you know what's cool? Ripping and tearing. You know what's really cool? Yeah. Uh, someone saying that to you in a really deep voice. Uh, well, if you, if you like that, you're going to lose your shit at where that game's story goes. Sure. And, and and then walking into giant fucking hell churches as the, the, the hell choir is singing at me. Is no, the, the throat singers fuck yeah. are just going in, in. there. Um, <laughs> all of that's good shit, you know. They've absolutely played up the energy of... Um, so Sam and Slayer in the first game have a very clear relationship of now you, want, you don't need to do that to... Okay, yeah. well, I see you don't. Oh, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and here they're kind of doing that with everyone you encounter, basically. Um, Every single person in the game says, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. But here's the problem, right? 
It's not. It's not a problem, actually. Here's the. Here's what. Here's the. Here's the, here's the solution. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. He's doing this with the same energy that Kratos had, with meeting anybody in God of War one to three, <laughs> and and Ascension, right? Literally, yeah. Like it is the same energy of fuck you, right? But the difference, yeah. And instead of going Ares, it's demons. Yeah, the difference so far, at least, is quite clearly that like. You know, in God of War, like, there were questionably cuts a lot of the time. For the most yeah. part, pretty pretty not great. But sometimes you're like, all right, Kratos. All right, chill, brah. The fuck? Yeah. You know? And, and here, it, it's like Tomb Guy. It's like, oh, no, you're just all, you're all garbage. You're all the absolute worst. And there is no question. What? about that attitude. What's that techno demon angel? I shouldn't do this. Yeah, yeah. They're playing that part up as hard as they can. Everyone meets Doomslayer and ends up like having a moment of like, I am the gr Wait, what are you? Hold on. Stop. Hmm. <laughs> Seems yeah. to be the energy they want to convey, which, you know, does does wonders for uh, making the video gamer feel powerful. So yay at that. And all that really matters is that painting of him and Daisy in his office. Right. Uh, found found a Daisy. That was cool. Found the rabbit. Yeah, I didn't know this until recently. That painting of Daisy and Doom Guy. That's fan art. Mm, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, the 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 moment you know the first the moment the first game has him push the screen out of his out of the way, and and just go on with the Doom slaying, and le they're like, this is the thesis statement for the entire franchise so let's keep that you know but at the same time they're not ever making it they're not turning it uh like i was wondering if they would do that for all plot and they clearly do not you know like they still have a story and they still have characters and i mean at one point like, i just met a dude you know and like the, the fucking slayer takes a knee you know he's like yeah. hey yo all due respect i'm gonna do me hey, you're cool but hey i get it you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. So these are little bits and pieces, and then he goes back to his fucking Fortress of Solitude to then <laughs> choose where to warp next and and save. The Doomopolis. You know, and uh, you gotta you gotta you gotta appreciate how you're looking at that map of like, here is the state of the world, and you're like, are you on North America? Go fuck yourself. In particular, New York and L.A. <laughs> like the in are just giant mouths. Y you are just it, it is a it is a demon sigil pentagram. Well, hey, there's a there's a level about halfway through the game that's literally just called Super Gore Nest. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you're like, how bad could the Gore Nest be? And it's like, oh, all the way to the horizon. Got it. Okay, great. The importance of, of me replaying as well is so that I can catch some of those finer details. Like, obviously, there's the awesome shit of the Titans walking around in the background of the first level. But um, yeah. walking by boxes that are just like, they're just assets as you play the game and look for secrets and things. But then you take a look again on replay and I'm like, wait, no, that is a cage stuffed with people to the brim. Oh, yeah. And they're all like in horrible suffering. This is this. And is, they're kind of melted. Yep. And then of course you get that you get that uh, that Olivia Pierce uh, energy as well, which is like the UAC would like to thank you for your suffering during this transition. Forget the future, pain keeps you tethered to the present. I was like, what? This sucks. Yeah, but that shit used to be for level three members only, right? Step one was mm -hmm. the future and science are awesome. And then step two is, hey, you might see some stuff that makes you nervous or confused. Uh, don't, worry don't worry about, about that it. Shit. Just realize that That's this is for the greater good and mankind needs this. And look how cool we are. Look how far we've gotten. Just accept it, okay? Stop questioning it. And then step three is, before the demon breaks your neck and feasts on your insides, be sure to put your equipment down in a safe place that doesn't break it. And do not anger the demon. Simply accept your fate as it consumes you. You know? So, like, that secret level 3 cultist shit has now been brought to the forefront and broadcast far and wide. So I'm like, oh boy, I'd love to see what what Sam has to say about all that, considering um, how fucking shit Olivia was. 
But everybody's got to get it. Everybody's got to get it. They've all got to get it. So, uh, in addition to the ultimate teaser, of course, being like, let's say you mashed, God bless Doom, let's say you mashed through every cutscene in that game, <laughs> and you didn't give a mm -hmm. fuck about anything that anyone said, and you, all you did was the shoot bang. They mm -hmm. also have a weapon teaser <laughs> where yeah. you're like, okay, so you cannot give a fuck about any of the events or people here, but they show you a weapon you want to get your fucking hands on. So hey, you want to hear a bummer about that weapon? No, don't, don't, don't do this to me, dude. It's not as good as the BFG. Don't do this to me. I'm very excited about my weapon teaser, man. I don't want it. I don't want you to ruin it. But yeah, um, uh, as long as you're in the video game and playing it, things are great. Plus, I also see that they've... Um, the whole thought process of like having a loop also applies to like, you know, your mobility and such. Like they want you to be in a room with the demons, just absolutely flying around all corners of it, every surface, jumping and, and boosting and doing wild things. Um, and... The fact that they tell you on the codec exactly what the weakness is for each thing is like setting you up for what I assume is going to feel like puzzle rooms. Like every once in a while when you're playing Bloody Palace in DMC 5 or 4 or 3, you get to a room that is more of a puzzle than it is a combat test. Each of the enemies has a really, really slow, annoying way to beat it. Or the quick deal with this, like, the, qu the quick way to deal with it. But if the quick way to deal with it is, like, easily interruptible by some bullshit to your left or your right, then setting that up is hard, you know? So that becomes the challenge. And I, and I can see that being the case where it's like, all you got to do is toss a grenade in that caco's mouth, but you got a fucking Hell Knight on your ass, you got an Arachnotron up your butt, and... I don't know what else is going to come, but probably some other motherfuckers suiciding, kamikazeing their way to you, you know? So I watched a bunch of the dev diaries, and the puzzle you rooms you describe, you've already seen them. Yeah. It's just they haven't been that intense, and it is... Uh, in some of the dev documents, they've, they've shown, like, the way that they spawn enemies in and on what order and at what threat level. And the puzzle is... What is the most dangerous thing in the room right now? Slash, how fast can I make it go? Because they spawn, if you let everything spawn in and let everything like live all at the same time, there's a lot coming at you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. So it becomes like, you know, so have you met the whiplash yet? Uh, is that the gargoyle? No, the snake bitches. No. Okay, once you meet them, you will you your brain will go, Oh, there's a whiplash. It needs to go. Okay. It it needs to go right away. Okay. And enemies start to get added to the, the priority list. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the thing of like, well, there are three whiplashes and there's one cyber demon and there's this, so which is a, and that's yeah, that's the puzzle. And then you have the secondary layer of the puzzle, which is your resource management you've got your flames you've got your nades you've got your super punch you've got your yeah uh your that blood punch is ridiculous. you got the blood punch you got the uh <laughs> it's it's fucking crazy you've got your your um healing kills you know your your glory kills and like you just have to cycle through it's like what do i need shields flame it up what do i need ammo saw chainsaw you know and like you're looking you're keeping your numbers up while also assessing the threat, getting their numbers down, getting their numbers, assess the threat, <laughs> get their numbers down, keep your numbers up, and never stop moving. This is the three yeah. circles, you know. And I'm like, I can see it. I can see it. I like that. Um, I like having moments where uh, you auto since you since you can glory kill things from super far away, like you or like or yeah. chainsaw from super far away. You'll like snap forward in mid air and like kill the caco. And then just backdash onto a platform. Because obviously if you just kill it and drop, you're dead. You know? Yeah. So it's like, be aware that the game will give you the ability to snap onto to that kill thing. kill yourself with a glory kill. But if you try to flex too hard, you're going to die. So back your ass back up onto the ground, you know? 
So uh, yeah, the loop, the loop is clear. The loop is clear. I'm having a lot of fun with that. That game's great. Uh, yes, and I am only shame about all that other shit. Shame though. about all that other shit, and I am only 1.5 missions into it. <laughs> yeah. So that was, and that's that's three hours, right? Um, four actually, four hours. You picked a great time to get into Doom because when you're done, you can get out of Doom. Yeah, there's that. Another thing too is you got to read the lore as we go this time. Um, oh, there's some sick shit in there. But you're supposed to know it as you go, um, as opposed to like later before. Yeah, if you don't, you'll be very, very confused. confused. Yeah, 